Welcome back to another episode of Paint with Michelle. This will be our last episode of the Cool Cats and Kittens series and our final project for 2022. This month's painting is inspired by ancient rock wall art and cave drawings known as petroglyphs. This month, you will need some extra supplies as we are making our canvas from scratch using laser cut wood and plaster of Paris to create a rock wall structure. We hope you've enjoyed our series this year. If you would like to see more videos in the future, drop a comment below to let us know what topics you would like to see. Be sure to check out our Paint with Michelle playlist to see all our past videos. Before we get started, let's learn about the earliest form of art documented by humans. Petroglyphs are images created by removing part of a rock surface by picking or carving as a form of rock art. Petroglyphs are found worldwide and are often associated with prehistoric peoples. Some petroglyphs have been dated around the Neolithic or Late Upper Paleolithic period, which was around 10,000 to 12,000 years ago. The word comes from the Greek prefix petro, meaning stone, and glypho, meaning carve. Other forms of petroglyphs include rock reliefs, which are sculptures carved from living rock such as a cliff. Petroglyphs can be found everywhere around the world except for Antarctica, with the highest numbers found in parts of Africa, Scandinavia, and Siberia. Cave paintings, or petrographs, are different than petroglyphs, but are often categorized together. For petrographs, the image on the rock structure is made from using pigments derived from natural elements and resources like colorful rocks, charcoal, berries, and occasionally animal blood. These items would be ground up into a paste by melting them over a fire. Animal fat would be added to thicken the paint, and the paint would then be applied to the wall by hand, a brush made from animal hair, or a hollowed out bone. Archaeologists have discovered drawing tools similar to the modern-day crayon that were made from ochre at some historical sites. Many think petroglyphs hold cultural and religious significance for the people that created them. Petroglyphs from different continents do show some similarities which could show evidence of migration from one centralized society that shared a common belief. Africa has some of the largest numbers of documented petroglyphs. Tassili Najer is a national park in the Sahara Desert, where it has one of the most significant collections of prehistoric cave art in the world. Some famous sites like Bizarre Cameroon are under threat by industrial companies that look to destroy natural resources as part of production for their operations. At Wadi Hammamet in Egypt, there are several petroglyphs that date long before the early Egyptian dynasties including a painting of reed boats that date back to 4000 BCE. The next largest concentration of petroglyphs are found in Asia. The Vembeka rock shelters in India show some of the earliest traces of human life and some evidence of the Stone Age. With over 750 rock shelters over 6 miles, there was evidence of inhabitants that date over 100,000 years ago. This is also one example of human settlement and evolution from hunter-gatherers to agriculture in Asian cultures. Some of the most world-famous petroglyphs have been discovered in Europe. Petroglyphs in Sweden depict images relating to the Nordic Bronze Age. Boats, wagons, and carts are commonly found in these glyphs, along with humans carrying bows, spears, or axes. These carvings are endangered by erosion from acidic rain and have been painted red to be more visible by tourists, which has drawn some criticism. Other European sites of interest for petroglyphs include Scotland, Ireland, and France, among others. Some of the most famous petroglyphs in South America can be found on the island of Rapa Nui, also known as Easter Island, in the territory of Chile. In addition to the Moai, or large stone statues the island is famous for, there are over 1,000 sites with over 4,000 petroglyphs catalogued around the island. These carvings were created to mark territory, memorialize a person or event, or the creation of a totem. Because of its access to the ocean, researchers have found several sea turtle and fish petroglyphs. 
For North America, there are several sites of importance in both Canada and Mexico, but there is a higher concentration of petroglyphs found around the west of the United States, especially around the state of Utah. Newspaper Rock is a state monument that features one of the largest known collections of petroglyphs in a single panel. The first carvings for Newspaper Rock date back around 2,000 years ago and were made by people from the Archaic, Anasazi, Fremont, Navajo, Anglo, and Pueblo cultures. Most petroglyphs in the United States can be attributed to Native Americans during prehistoric and historic periods. Hawaiian petroglyphs are rather interesting. While there are petroglyphs, or ki'ai pohaku, carved onto rocks and caves that have been around for several ages, there are quite a few found on lava rocks. As the islands of Hawaii are located on or near active volcanoes, they are constantly growing as lava spills out and hardens when it cools. Located in the Hawaii Volcanoes National Park on the southern side of Kilauea Volcano, Kualoa features the largest concentration of petroglyphs in all of Hawaii, with more than 23,000 images. Images that can be seen here include holes, circles, human representations, canoe sails, and feathered cape motifs. For as long as there have been humans, there has been the existence of wild beasts that live among us. While most cats we live beside today are those of the common house cat, Early humans lived with the saber-toothed cat, otherwise known as the Smilodon. Some of the oldest petroglyphs have captured this cat's likeness forever on their walls, telling us the history of these felines. As time moved forward and cats evolved around different cultures and society, humans continued to document them. In South America, you may see petroglyphs depicting jaguars, and in North America, large cats, such as the mountain lion or bobcat, may be illustrated. For our painting today, Miss Michelle will be using an image of a cat petroglyph taken at the Petrified Forest National Park in Arizona as the main reference. She will also use some common images of humans and longhorn sheep from other North American sites to fill in the rest of the canvas. To begin, we need to design our canvas. However, you can use traditional store-bought canvas for your painting. In this video, Miss Michelle is taking the shape of the Rosetta Stone, which is an ancient stone with text that helped decipher several languages, and laser cutting the shape from some leftover wood. After resizing and making the correct laser settings, we will cut the shape from quarter inch composite wood. Once cut, use an electric sander or a piece of 120 grit sandpaper to remove the smooth finish. If you don't do this step, the texture will not stick to the board. Once complete, we need to give the canvas a rock-like texture. To achieve this, you will need a plastic cup and craft sticks for mixing, one fourth of a cup of plaster of Paris, two tablespoons of warm water, one to two tablespoons of coarse sand and gravel, and about a tablespoon of the paint color you want the base of your rock to be. You will also need a bristle brush for application. Take your time and be sure to carefully mix your ingredients. If your texture is too dry, you can add a little more water to thin the mixture.
Once completely mixed, take the bristle brush and coat the surface of your canvas. Go over areas that need more texture. With your remaining plaster mix, scoop out and plop the plaster randomly across the canvas to make small bumps. These will give your canvas a more organic, rock-like appearance. Once done, set aside for at least two days to fully dry. Once the canvas is dry, it's time to paint your design. For this next part, you will need clean paint brushes, an art sponge, acrylic paint in earth tones. We are using the colors gray, tan, golden brown, and terracotta, clean water, and soft pastels in earth tone shades. There are two sets that we use in this video, but the softer the pastels are, the better they work. You will also need the dried plastered canvas and our reference images. To begin, take the acrylic paint and lightly tap a damp sponge into the paint. Then tap the paint around the canvas with higher concentration around the edges and the bumps. This will make the canvas look more rock-like. Switch between the different colors to add dimension and aging. Next, use a black pastel to draw the outline of your cat. It's okay if the cat is not perfect or looks unusual. It will add character to your work. Once you finish drawing, use your fingers to lightly rub in the pastel. You will need a paper towel to clean off your finger when finished. Now take a clean paintbrush and dip it into water. Paint the water over the pastel and you will see the pigment soak into the plaster. Once you are happy with the outline of your cat, you can move on to adding other animals and characters. For this painting, we are adding two longhorn sheep, one human, a river, and a small mountain range. After adding these icons, the cat's outline should be dry enough for us to color it in. Miss Michelle is using a dark mustard yellow color for the cat's body. Shade in the cat with the soft pastel a little at a time, and then go over that section with water on the paintbrush. You will want to work in small sections so that the water does not cause the pastel pigment to bleed over to other areas. Take your time and add any other details as needed. Finally, take the damp sponge and dip it into the tan acrylic paint. Tap the paint all over the canvas very lightly. This will help age your painting's appearance. You can also sponge the darker colors on there as needed. Once your painting is done, we recommend waiting a day for it to fully dry and then using a clear spray paint to seal in the painting. Don't forget to add your artist's signature and you will have an interesting work of art that is sure to be a conversation starter. Thank you for watching our Cool Cats and Kittens series of Paint with Michelle. We hope you enjoyed this season, and don't forget to reach out to tell us if you want to see more. We'll see you next time, makers!